These are PV2 proportional valves, combination valves for General Motors uh, from late 60s, I believe, to the 90s. Anyways, this is for front disc brakes and for rear drums. The two front disc brakes hook up to these two outlets. This goes here goes to the master cylinder for the front part. This is the rear part. This is the line that goes to the rear of the car and it gets split around where the uh, rear end is to the two rear brakes. This is the switch for the um, brake warning light switch when the spool is gone back and forth to either black out the front or the rear. It contacts the switch when this terminal of this is grounded the light comes on. It also comes on when your uh, parking brake is off or it's on. So anyways if you got the car parked so it's not going to roll put it in uh, take the parking brake off when you uh, turn the ignition on and grounding either the parking or the uh, this will go ahead and turn the light on for the brake. This switch here when the spool goes back and forth I've got this ohm meter hooked up you can hear this. It's not the spool inside that is to hold the centered touching the spool it's actually isolated. So what's happening here is this has got a spring load on it. And when it's out of the unit, it's not connected. If I compress this, so this is actually a switch. I first thought this was contacting and this was hooked up all the time with the spring such it was touching the spool, but the spools because it's held with o-rings is not touching so this makes more sense it actually pushes on this and that makes the contact now, this is a used one out of a car this is a brand new one I pulled out of this and if I could squeeze this on there pushing that down sets it off so when this is screwed in here it's got a 5 8 Just put finger tight on that right now. The spool is not moved over to lock out the rear or other front section. These came out around 67 is after the Ralph Nader stuff with a bunch of car safety standards. If the it's a major leak in the back end, what happened is the spool is going to move over and shut off the rear brakes. If there's a leak in the front, major it's going to shut spool is going to move over and that's the dual brakes now once that's happened you have to go through and uh, the lights always going to be on to get this centered you have to find if it's moved over this way you have to go ahead and fix your brakes first and then have a uh, this bleeder open and you have to hit the pedal such that it's going to force the spool back over and this tool here, of course, is one that you put in for bleeding, bleeding brakes if you don't want to go through and have the thing have a false trip. If you have too much flow or you hit the pedal down, it can go ahead and lock over. This is one from uh, CPP. Here's a generic one. That just fits in there and prevents, during the bleeding operation, prevents the spool moving back and forth, the lock-off spool. There also is a proportional part so that it gives the pressure, I believe, to the back first before the fronts. Uh, and that's why there's a different valve for uh, ones that are disc-disc versus disc-drum. It's a different valve like this. One in the car is actually cast iron looking. If they get old, you can't get the spool to get stuck in where it doesn't necessarily want to uh, be able to hit the brakes with one open to go ahead and move the spool back. And these are some I've gotten just to play around with. Sometimes you can stick a pin in there and try to move the uh, spool back. And 
and I don't know if that connects up to here. I've had somebody say you can push on that. And so when this is tripped, it might be that it pops out of there. I believe that will. That little cap goes on there like that. Now the fitting for this, I didn't see it listed on the internet, but what I've gathered here is this is a half inch 20 thread. And actually this one here to the front where the master cylinder connects the input to the block, that's actually got the same uh, thread here. This one doesn't have the length of threads. If you take the switch here, this will actually, you're supposed to put it in there, but that's got the same threads. It kind of makes sense because machining operation, you get the same threads for this. This, of course, has got an O-ring. Now, when I take this old one out of an old uh, Camaro this morning, the O-ring was basically gone. And it's probably been off before because uh, when somebody else did the brakes, but the threads were all boogered up. And so I'm going to probably get a new one if I reuse the one in the car. This half inch 20 will fit this, but it really doesn't like to clean up that Delrin very well. So that goes down into here. Usually on these, there's a screw that holds this on, and there's another piece of the bracket that goes in the hole here like this. Of course, the lines go into here. You've got the double uh, flange on the end of the tube, double flare. Those are around 35 to 50 bucks on eBay, roughly. But I first thought that, again, this was always connected up and it was touching the center of the spool. But that's obviously that was a bad assumption. So, so it's got to move about probably an eighth of an inch. So this has got a decent amount of force on there. Probably about five, probably five or ten pounds. So you've got on the side of the spool that moves back and forth this little thing here. And the side of this has got the spool goes like this, it's neck down. And so this tip is going down here like this touching this so if this like this gets pushed this way like there's a front uh, like if you go ahead and bleed the brakes and you don't have too aggressively and you don't have this tool in here like you uh, hit the brakes what can happen is you get a lot of flow the spool will move over and so this here will go over to here like this. So it's going to be on this, this here is going to be like it's over on this piece here. So it's going to push this in and uh, turn the light on. Same thing, it could go that this piece will go over to here. Now if that's completely moved over, I don't think you're going to be able to go ahead and get a, uh, a needle in there and move it. I've heard some people say you you can do that. I just went in here like this and so, tried to see if I could just for kicks move this around a little bit. And I probably need to take one apart more next experiment. That sure looks like it's coaxial in there. So somebody else said this pin comes out if it's been moved over. If that's the case, you could probably push this back in, and that would be to where you've got flow out of the front. Now, if it went that way, I don't think there's anything you can do. I don't know how you can get that back in there. The ones that are OEM for the car don't look, they have the same function as this, but they're not solid brass. I think they're iron looking to casting. Here it is, PV2. I 
think it takes something at four or five hundred psi to move this back. The one that was on the car this morning, I went through and had uh, I bred the the brakes brakes with a power bleeder, and it was the light turned on because the spool was this way. Went up under the car and undid the right rear uh, bleeder, and then I had the ones in the front. Uh, locked down and I went ahead and hit put the brakes really hard and the light went off first time it flickered but it did send the spool back so it's pressurizing on both sides this can't build up any pressure because uh, this is for the rear this is for the front so it's going to go ahead and push the spool back and so it did that and turned the light off so I got the one in the car centered up and I'm not sure though if you get a car that's 30, 40, 50 years old, if that if that thing gets to be kind of lazy in there because it's full of goop. So I'm going to go ahead on an old car. I'm going to go ahead and replace one of these anyways. But that's just a straight thread on there. Holds the holds this in place instead of the switch. This one came off. The one on the car. You can't even see the O-ring. It's like the O-ring must have totally been mushed with time. Uh, been in there since the early 80s. And when I tried to put this back in, uh, beware, is that I couldn't get the darn thing back in there. So, uh, you might end up be buying another one of these. The one that's on the car, when I went ahead and... Uh, this is original GM one tried to put this in it wouldn't do this until I tapped this and so it looks like it probably needs a new o-ring on here I believe these are between say seven to fifteen bucks I believe that's the GM switch this is a PV2 by CPP and this is one I got from uh, I believe who did I get this from? I got this from Romeo, Michigan, from, uh, ooh, Technology to Shelby County, Mich Michigan. I got that from the Speed Guys over in, uh, Michigan, up in Romeo. These are all over the place. It's cheapest sometimes to buy one of these if you're getting the valve to get the combo and you're done. These are anywhere between eight to twenty bucks, twenty-five. I couldn't find any one of these at O'Reilly, AutoZone, uh all the local places around here. Uh advanced, they didn't know what the heck that was. Kind of interesting like that. This is just a this one here came with, I believe, this I bought separately from Speedway Motors. It was a combination with a, a bleeder hose. This was packaged with uh, this CPP Classic Performance Parts. I got this one as a, as a combo. Of course, there's only one per car. But these really look nice. I'm amazed the machining on these. If they're all made at the same place. The center of uh, the rotation here on the machining is farther out. So these are probably made on a different line. There's a little switch. Sometimes this, to get this off, you squeeze the connector and pull it out. Mine, because the car sat up for 20 years, I had to really look at the shop manual. I didn't want to rip it apart. I had to really squeeze in it like the plastic just got to be old and frumpy and finally squeeze it to get this thing off. But it was, uh, I actually rotated around to see if I could kind of get some of the crud off. It was all clean inside, but it just took. Uh, 
it was really wailed on there in the sense that the squish connector that you squish the two ears just didn't want to go. And the O-ring was completely gone on that. I don't think these are really going to fail because uh, the contact on this all sealed up. Looks like the only thing that can fail is the threads on this. And when, I only have taken this off once in my lifetime and I couldn't screw it back in. The threads were just totally uh, muffed up around here. And I took with a pen knife and cut off this part of the thread and was able to go ahead and screw it in, but it still had uh, some chew marks on it. Maybe it just had been sitting so long. So I did chase it with a die. Half inch 20, but I'm not going to reuse that in one anyway. It's too much. I don't like stuff that you barely can get off. I mean, I got a six point socket on there long enough that it's, you know, a deep socket so I can grab that, but I had to really kind of wail on that to get it off there. This has already got some deformation. I think that doesn't really have to be that tight. Like it's just sitting up with time. And there's the CP one here, PV2. I think the warning here for California about P65 is probably this brass. It's on all this stuff. It's probably free machining brass, which means it's got a little bit of lead in it. So unless you took the red lead shavings and chewed them up and swallowed them, I don't think you're going to uh, be an issue. It makes the temperature, the cooling of the uh, cutter to be way lower. Sometimes you add lead, uh, stuff like that, and you can machine it five times quicker. That looks like it's a piece they machine and pop it in there is what they did. This is a solid block and then these are through holes and that's like a bushing they press in. These are really well made. I'm, I'm really impressed. So one of my lists to do is take one of those apart. Now if you had a pressure gauge, I guess you could pressure this one and not the other to see the force it takes to get the uh, piece to slide in there. And I've heard some people say that when you go ahead and take the side that, uh, let's say you bled the front here and you got the spool to move over because he didn't use the tool. Uh, I bled, bled the front before and never used this tool. But I just uh, didn't use a pressure bleeder. So I ended up using a pressure bleeder and that's when it went ahead and locked this off on the one in the car. So the light came on. I said, oh gosh, I screwed up. So today I went through and undid the black back uh, rear one of the calipers, or not the uh, cylinders, the bleeders. It's an 8 millimeter. And then went ahead and all these were shut off, uh, tightened down. I put the pedal and the light went off, so it moves the spool back. And the question I have, if the master cylinder is old and dirty, you got a bunch of crud in there, uh, I could believe that you might get a spool that's going to get stuck to one side and just have some crap that makes it a higher force to move it over. Uh, if they're old and corroded, you probably should just go ahead and replace one of these things. If uh, That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and replace the lines on my car and put a new one of these in anyways. So, but I looked high and low to find out. It says that this is a half inch 20, but I couldn't find what this thread is. And that's sure, that's a straight thread I've measured on a mic. It doesn't look like it's tapered. And it's kind of tight on this die, at least on this old one. And a die can be to where it, it actually cuts down. You don't know what the percentage of... Uh, the minor diameter. Some of these dies are designed to clean up and take a bunch off, but 
it was actually cutting the delrin here and I put some goop on it and cut it out now it'll go in there so half inch 20 that's a national fine I could probably use this old one if I had to just have to find an o-ring put on there it's got o-rings on either side of the spool here there's an o-ring o-rings on either side of this thing a couple of them now you can go through and center this by also undoing one of the lines here for the rear or undoing one over here but when you do that you, it, it doesn't have to be necessarily the calipers but if you do that one, if you got it slightly loose, you're going to spray brake fluid all over the place. I've done that one time <laughs> years ago. It looked like a squirt gun. It went all over. Got some on the fender. Some went off in the garage. So you want to go ahead and put a rag around that. Uh, then you're going to have to bleed the brakes anyways. But if you just want to go ahead and quickly do it, and you got to bleed the brakes anyways. Uh, if you crack one of these open then you're going to have a leak on the front you crack this one to the rear you've got one to the rear so if you got a helper what you can do sometimes is just crack this slightly and uh, be ready to put it back so when somebody hits the brake keep it down it's like you're bleeding you're going to get some of the whiz out of there and then you lock it down so you don't suck air back in there so as long as under pressure you're not going to get any air in there so if you have a two-man thing you can go through crack this open on this side or this side when the brake gets pushed you move the spool over to the light goes off but those are the combination valves it's called a combination because it's more than a proportional these are the particular one for GM that are used for drums in the rear discs in the front that was very common uh, not to have uh, discs in the back for a long time in fact one time discs in the front were rare that's about